Okay, this is the last card of Unit 5, last lesson of Unit 5, and then we're, we're finished, and it's about changing media. So 5.33, again, at any time, pause the lesson so you can write down if I'm going too fast, but I do want you to make sure you listen because you're getting commentary that you're missing in class, and so make sure you listen to me. It'll be pretty quick. All right, backside flip over, uh, and let's start. So one, uh, changing media. Media has changed dramatically in the last 20 to 25 years. There's increasing demands for more media. You just think of the growth of YouTube um, and then all the types of uh, online sites that people can read. And so there's massive increase in media because we can all access it from the tip of our fingers. So increasing demands for media. Um, also, uh, the audience in America is ideologically diverse, uh, maybe more so than ever. Uh, and part of that is is the, from the fact that as a liberal or conservative or whatever ideology you subscribe to, you can find websites, uh, you can find uh, YouTube, you can find all kinds of uh, sort of media that kind of fit your uh, ideological persuasion. So very diverse audience. And then that leads to increasing media choices. Because it's so easy to create a blog or a YouTube video or whatever type of media you imagine, uh, therefore, there's just a lot of choices. And there's also a lot of choices in cable, TV. I mean, Fox News just started 20 years ago, uh, CNN only about 35 years ago, and then you got MSNBC, CNBC, you got all kinds of news outlets as well. So lots of choices that you can make. Um, with the result of this, which I mentioned just a few minutes ago, is a massive growth of partisan news sites, sites that lean right or left, Republican more so, or Democrat, in ideologically oriented programming, where you go to Fox and there's um, TV shows that are very conservative, and then you go to CNN and they have like very very liberal ones, or MSNBC, which is which is extremely left, um, or you know, and, and Fox News has certain ones that are extremely right, and so you just have these programming that you can go and watch exactly what you believe and and feel confirmed in what you believe. The problem with that is that then you're not exposed to other views. And when you're not exposed to other views and don't understand what the other side believes, when that happens, you tend to be intolerant. You tend to think that the other side is evil. And, and in some cases, this even leads to people um, talking about the other side in an inhuman sort of way, as if somehow they're not human because they don't believe the same thing that you believe. And this is a real problem in America with the growth of this sort of hyper partisanship where we don't even know the other side and we hate the other side. This is really kind of what Ellen was getting at. You could have friends that disagree with you and it's actually okay, but that's becoming increasingly rare um, in America, sadly. And I think part of it is this, you know, the fact that we're so engaged in partisan news sites and ideological programming. Um, and by the way, it's not a problem if you do that. It's just a problem if you never hear the other side. That's the problem. Uh, you see this site here. Uh, this, there's typical charts on the internet, and you could debate like how accurate they are. Um, you know, you can quibble at like where they on this chart they put certain news sites. But you notice like down the middle, these are like more minimal partisan bias. Um, this was done a few years ago. It's probably changed now. But you can see like in the middle, you have like AP and Reuters and Bloomberg and ABC News and USA Today. You know, they tend to not be super partisan. And then you go to the left and you get like Politico or the Washington Post and New York Times. Those tend to be more toward the left. The New Yorker, The Week. Then you go to the right and you got like National Review and uh, Weekly Standard, The Hill. So you have all these different sites. And, and again, you could debate this, but it's just going to show like these are all over uh, the place in terms of political persuasion. And this is helpful too for you for if you're looking at a site and you're getting a link or, or a report off of MSNBC, oh, wait a second, this skews liberal. Now that, by the way, doesn't mean that it's not true or that you're watching, reading the Washington Examiner, which you can see in the middle to the right. That doesn't mean that it's not true. It's just that understand that there could be political bias. They may leave out the other side. Um, it's, the potential for political bias is more likely. Um, and then uh, moving here toward the end is that we also have a debate over media bias. There's a, a very large debate over whether the media is biased, uh, especially toward conservatives, and that the media bias is toward the liberal end. Um, there's been a lot of polls taken. There's been a lot of research on this. And there's no question that people who go into journalism and go into the media 
tend to be overwhelmingly liberal. And so therefore that colors the kind of news that's covered, the news that's not covered, and the kind of uh, coverage that is given. Let me give you some research about that. Um, so here's a very classic research about party affiliation historically. And you can see that like in 1971, if you go to the left, um, red, the Republicans made about 25.7% of all media people, which is still the minority in this, go to the right in 2013, it was 7%. Like if you're a Republican, like the chance that you go into media and take part in journalism is just pretty low. Um, and then you notice the Democrat percentage went down as well um, and the independent rose to 50%. The only thing about that that's a little deceptive is that most people who are in the media, whether they're in print media like the newspapers or whether they're in public, in TV media like CNN, Fox News, NBC, things like that, even if they're independent, they tend to lean to the left pretty heavily and identify as liberal. Um, some more uh, evidence of that. This comes from uh, a research from the University of Arizona. And so uh, if you look at where it says 2018, just 11% of the media when uh, polled said they would try to help the a Republican in a, candidate, in, a, in a race. So pretty overwhelmingly against the Republicans. And um, there's a ratio of 13 liberal journalists for every one conservative. So really overwhelming news um, bias in that sense. You can see here in the, in the right uh, Freedom Forum survey uh, that like about 90% of journalists voted for Clinton. Um, and I don't know how totally accurate that poll is because it only had 139 bureau chiefs, but bureau chiefs are like the head people of East newspaper and news media. So they're, pr they're pretty big wigs and, uh, and that has influence, of course. Uh, this one is really interesting. This came up from Pew Research Center, a very balanced, neutral site. And Pew asked whether, they, you know, there was those Republicans and conservatives were saying that there was news bias against Trump. So Pew Research in 2017 actually looked at all the news articles that were out there and defined it um, by whether or not uh, there were negative or positive statements for or against a president. And they went back and researched it. And look at Trump. 62% of news coverage for Trump was negative and only 5% was positive. Um, I'm going to guess the 5% of news coverage that was positive probably came from Fox News, <laughs> but um, in 33% was neither. And then look at the contrary, compare, contrast that with Obama, of course, who's a Democrat and a more liberal Democrat, 42% of news coverage was positive, 38% neutral which means 80% of the coverage was, was pretty good for him. Um, Bush, Clinton, similar. Um, neither one had overwhelming um, negative and neither one had overwhelming positive, but more was neutral in the middle, which is probably what you want um, from news coverage. But it's certainly in recent years, it's been very one-sided. Um, so you can see that. And then here's another thing from uh, other polls, uh, Media Research Center, which, which looks at media bias. They looked at a couple months here last year from 2018, 7, 29, July 29th through October 20th, and uh, 623 news stories were negative. This is from ABC, CBS, NBC, Evening News, 63 were positive toward Trump. And then they did another area um, from 2018, uh, last year, I should say this year, uh, from January 1st to uh, April 30th, 90% uh, were, were negative statements toward Trump. Um, on ABC, CBS, NBC, a newscast, and only 10% were positive statements. So certainly if you get, if you get your um, news from the major media, there, there tends to be a pretty overwhelming bias against Trump in particular, uh, Republicans in general, although it was a little more even with Bush and Clinton if you go back 20 years. And then this, of course, impacts what people believe. Look at GOP, that's Republican. 92% of Republicans feel like the news media often reports fake, false, or purposely misleading news. Interesting about that, 72% overall feel that's true. Um, and Democrats themselves feel like the news media reports fake, false, or purposely misleading news 53% of the time. And this kind of goes a little bit to some of the things I showed you yesterday, where the media focuses on so much of the negative, 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 that we have false perceptions about like, you know, uh, school shootings, although we have to be prepared and it's a scary thing, you know, like crime in schools and the chance of dying in schools actually decreased since the early 90s. 
Um, but you know, forest fires, whatever the issue is, like just the news media's focus on the negative because you and I like it and we're kind of dramatic in that way. Um, but also feeds into the fact that the media is not as trusted and because we feel like the news is false or purposely misleading as a result. And it's pretty overwhelming and with all demographics, even Democrats who generally the media would portray in a more positive light, um, even they believe that's a lot or sometimes. Uh, and then here's news coverage of Trump. This is just interesting, goes with what we've been talking about, is that a lot of news coverage is not based on policy or agenda, that's the gray, and they are like beliefs, but instead it's a lot of focused on leadership and character, which just means basically personality. Um, a lot of personality trumps actual content. And you can see that that's increased dramatically here with Trump. A lot of it's on Trump and his personality and things he said, rather than actually policy and what he's done. And then, so, la so lastly, this just finishes it out. Um, as a result, there is uncertainty um, among the uh, population about the credibility of news sources and information. And you just have to be highly, um, you know, cognizant of the fact that there are news sites out there that are not accurate. Um, there are, uh, you know, even if it's accurate, it can just be give you the wrong perception due to the focus on the negative that is typical in the news media. The old saying, if it bleeds, it leads, um, certainly applies in a lot of cases. All right, great. Um, go ahead and do the other things. You got several other things you need to do. You need to turn those in Google Classroom. Make sure you do them all. Thank you.